This one is going to bring a sign language interpreter. OK, that's their right. Or does that mean they're going to have a sign language interpreter with them all the time if they were working here? We'd have to ask them that. And who's going to pay for that? Are we going to pay for that? I can't see management going for it. It makes sense if the person needs a support to disclose. The problem for the person who's going for the interview is that there is a big fear around if somebody discloses, oh, by the way, I have a disability, there is a fear that they won't get the job. The employer is going to be thinking, oh, they need something or they won't be able to do the job, as opposed to, well, I can put a support in place which will enable the person to do the job. So, these are our interviewees. Right. Let's see. We have one, two, three people with disabilities. So you can take them. What? No way. We're both doing these. No, I'm not interviewing them. Why? Well, what if I say something wrong or, or say something that I shouldn't say? I could get fired. Look, we stick to the questions, we stick to the marking grid. There'll be no problem. Okay? Okay. Some employers are concerned that candidates with disabilities are more likely to sue them if they don't get a job than other candidates. And I don't think that's the case. There are nine discriminatory grounds in the Employment Equality Acts ranging from gender, age, race, and disability, uh, along with all of the others. And I don't think there's a greater likelihood of a candidate with a disability or a particular disability bringing a claim than there is for another person. It's absolutely critical that an employer would adhere to a specific recruitment process um, when a person with a disability applies for a job, that they have their criteria for the job, that they, they actually uh, mark the candidate's performance in the same way as every other candidate, so they're checking their competency against specific parts of the job. Employers should ensure that the interviewers are trained in non-discrimination before participating in interviews, and that they make sure that they retain their documents, and that they each take their own notes or you can have the practice, for example, where there are three interviewers while one is questioning, the other two are taking notes and, and, and to, to follow that around. If a manager came to me and they had a concern about interviewing someone with a disability, I'd first of all get them to define what their, their, their concern would be. And if need be, I would uh, go into the interview with them and just make sure that they, they, they're comfortable, the candidate is comfortable, implement the best practices model, which we went through in our training, and hopefully, um, the candidate will be successful in the job. I think they should just treat them like any other candidate. I mean, disabled, the person with a disability is a person at the end of the day. So they should just treat them the same and give them the same chances and think about it in terms of not the disability, but what are the competencies for the job? What can they add to my company? It was exhausting. Mm, I know, a lot of people want that job. Well, there's one thing for sure. I know, that candidate isn't right for the job. So, where does that leave us now? What do you mean? Well, I mean, we have to give him the job, we interviewed him. Why? We'll be accused of discrimination. We'll be sued, you and me, personally. Don't be silly, they can't do that. Can they? The employer is entitled to make a decision as to who is the best candidate for a job. What the law says is that the employer cannot discriminate directly or indirectly in making that decision. If an employer on any particular day hires 10 people for, for a job and, and somebody with a disability was in that, that 10, the, those 10 people. And the person 
actually wasn't the best candidate on the day, then they do not have to hire them for the job. But that they just have to, like anybody else, show the reasons why they didn't select that person and ensure that they have quite clear and transparent decision-making decision -making systems around the interview and selection process. But our real issue, it's him. Yeah, perfect experience. Perfect education, perfect attitude, but... He told us. It wasn't on the CV, I would have picked it up. Dyslexia doesn't mean you can't make a good CV. He says he has software which enables him to read and write just as well as anyone else. Yeah, but... But? Like, what if it doesn't work out? This is a high-profile job, and I don't want the same mess that happened in accounts last month. We need someone safe. He is safe. He's the best guy for the job. He scored the highest. I mean, he told us about his dyslexia, and he told us what he puts in place to deal with it. He even got a first in college. I mean, are we not equal opportunity employers? We've got to walk the walk. I say we check his references, and we go with him. If the employer isn't sure what kind of accommodation the per a graduate would need to do the job, they must ask the person, because the person is really the best expert about what works for them. The graduate's been through third level college, they've dealt with the demands of a third level course, um, which are usually probably more daunting than, than what the workplace is going to throw up. So they're going to know what works for them, and if, if the employer gives them a chance to explain what works for them, they, they will be able to tell them.